Hey there guys, Botstobo here. Today what I got for you is a video where we're going to be testing out various pieces of chemical protection against uranium ore. So pretty much what we're going to be testing is how well these different pieces of PPE can protect you against gamma radiation. I've got a few masks here, of course, but I've also got a chemical suit, uh, an apron, and a helmet cover for you today. But before we jump into it, I apologize for the audio quality. I really wanted to film this video outside because I thought it'd be cool, but I apparently picked the windiest day of the fucking century, and also my neighbors are spreading manure on their fields, so it's it smells like shit for me, and also every now and again you're gonna hear a, a big fucking tractor drive by. Sorry about that. So yeah, as for our setup, we've got a sample of uranium ore right here. Right now it's in a lead jar, but I'll take it out in a minute here. And then we've got a GMC 300S Geiger counter. And for me, I'm just wearing some vinyl gloves to keep radioactive dust off of me. All right, so why don't we bust out this uranium? As you can see, here's our jar. And in a little plastic bag, we've got uranium ore. Now, let's uh, put our Geiger counter next to it. As you can see, this is, in fact, radioactive. So as you can see, it's, it's up there. It's definitely not the hottest sample you could get, but I mean, it's still radioactive and you still need to respect radiation and radioactive materials. I just noticed that there's a woolly bear over here. That guy has no comprehension of this. That little guy could be obliterated by natural forces beyond his comprehension. But anyhow, why don't we test our first mask? Before we test each item, I'm actually going to make a prediction on whether or not it'll provide any sort of meaningful protection. And for the Mira CM8M or OM2020, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to go with no. I don't think it's going to provide any meaningful protection. Well, I specifically mean protection against gamma radiation, but let's get that on there. I'm putting it down like this so that we can simulate uh, essentially the exposure, the most likely exposure. You're wearing it, so let's put that in there. As you can see, we're getting a significantly lower number of counts per minute, but that's from the mask actually blocking beta radiation, and the rest is gamma that's still managing to penetrate. And I mean, that's pretty much what I expected. Protection against alpha and beta, but then gamma still punching through really easily. Our next mask is the M50 Joint Service General Purpose Mask. This is, of course, the standard issue gas mask of the U.S. military, and for this test, we are going to be removing the voice projection unit so that we can position it more easily. As you can see, we are right up against the rocks, and, well, I'm about to put this Geiger counter in there, but before I do, I've got to make my prediction. Once again, I think this is going to protect against beta radiation, so we're going to see a pretty significant drop in our CPM, but I still think we're going to see a lot of gamma sneaking through. Well, less sneaking and more punching through. So as you can hear by the sound of our little alarm, we're getting pretty much the same results. It's been bouncing around between like 320 and like 280, just like the uh, CM8M was. So once again, alpha and beta, you're good, but gamma punches right through. So next up, we've got the Avon M53. This is my personal setup. It uses the Gore Chempak sewn-in hood, the decon cover, and a CTC F50 riot agent filter. So naturally, we are going to be testing both the hood and the mask, and I've got to make my predictions. The hood, alpha and beta, beta maybe actually, I'm not too sure about beta, but gamma definitely not. The mask, alpha and beta, not gamma. So let's start with the hood. I'm actually going to have it uh, realistically, so I'm going to position this so that I can get a single layer of Kempak. All right, so there's our single layer of Gore Kempak. And here comes the GMC 300S. Wow, that thing is kicking up way faster, way faster. So as you can see, this thing provides 
no beta protection, absolutely no gamma protection. Alpha, I think it would probably do that, at least keep it off your skin. But I mean, look at that number. That's pretty high. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what we started out with, without any protection. But now let's move on from the hood to the actual mask. All right, we've got the hood kind of folded over, which means we can get it down onto there. Well, with my glasses inserts, that's going to be a little difficult to get it as close to the uranium as we've been doing with the other pieces. But let's give it a try anyway and keep that in mind. As you can see, we're actually getting a slightly lower CPM than the other two masks, but that seems to just be from the increased distance, which is a shame, but we've got to account for that variable. And to prove that's actually what's doing it, watch me slowly lower this Geiger counter towards the radiation. Yeah, you can see that, of course, as this thing gets further away, it slows down. So yeah, basically, we received pretty much the same results as the other two masks. Once again, alpha and beta, check, gamma, no. And our final mask before we start getting to suits and, well, other body equipment is the Russian ROU. Those of you who are familiar with this thing will know that this thing was actually designed to actually protect you from the results of a nuclear detonation. Basically, it's a disposable gas mask that is meant to protect you against uh, the inhalation of fallout and any sort of just various war gas. But however, I still think that this thing will protect against alpha and beta, but not gamma. Let's test that out. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Wow, that is kicking up. Okay, that is strange. As you can see, we're getting like five to six hundred. Maybe that's just uh, because of where I put it. All right, I'm going to chalk up that five to six hundred reading as experimental error. My bad. Now that we've got it in there more snugly, yeah, it's getting the same results as all the other masks. So it seems we've learned that gas masks, not exactly meant for use against gamma radiation. Now let's finally move on to chemical suits. What I've got here is an M2 Toxicological Agents Protective Apron. This is an apron currently used by the US military to keep splashes of, well, poisonous chemicals off of your body. Naturally, this isn't meant to be worn on its own, so underneath it, I've got a JS List chemical suit. That is pretty much the most common military chemical suit in the United States, and it is the chemical suit that the United States is currently using, although they have been trying to phase it out for years and years now. And also, it appears that my vinyl exam gloves are ripped. At least this one is. So I'm going to have the M2 tap apron underneath the JS list because this is your outer layer and the JS list is your inner layer. And I should note that this is, well, butyl-coated nylon. Okay, so the JS list is just fabric with activated carbon trapped inside of it. Anyways, I think this is going to work against alpha and beta again, but this combo, again, not going to be enough for gamma. Let's try it out. Maybe I should turn on my Geiger counter first. Where did I even put the... There it is. Oh, shit. Whoa. Okay. That is not at all what I was expecting. I'm going to go with this combo not having beta protection and especially not gamma. Of course, maybe minor beta shielding because we are definitely lower than what we were initially getting when it was just bare uranium. But of course, that lower number could also be a result of, well, blocking alpha radiation, but I don't know. So yeah, that's not what I was expecting at all. That's pretty wild. Moving on to our penultimate item for today, we've got this glove from Airboss. 
Once again, I'm gonna go with the answer I've been giving literally every time so far. Alpha and beta, you're good, but gamma, no. And since I'm not exactly gonna put my Geiger counter in the glove, I'm just gonna set the glove on top and give it the best possible chance with two layers of butyl rubber. At least I believe this is butyl. It feels like but uh, butyl. I should turn it on first. All right, there we go. Second time is the charm. As you can see, once again, we've crossed the 250 CPM, which turns on my alarm. And in fact, now we're over 300. So we're getting pretty much the same level of protection as, well, every gas mask we've tested so far. So yeah, we are definitely experiencing, well, protection against alpha and beta, but once again, gamma going right through. Our final item for today is this Kevlar Pazgat helmet. I think this is our best chance at actually beating gamma radiation because Kevlar is quite dense and that's how you defeat gamma radiation. You either require a very dense material like lead or a lot of material between you and the source, like a dirt enfilade or something. So let's put our brain bucket on top of this ore. All right, I think that's the best we're gonna get it. Stick that in. And it's kicking up. And once again, we're about to cross the alarm threshold. So once again, alpha and beta, this thing protects fine against it, but gamma, absolutely not. So I put away the uranium and now I feel like I've got some questions to answer. And the main one is if I already sort of knew how all these tests would turn out, why even do them? And to answer that, I think we need to talk about our little friend, the woolly bear. As I said, when we first spotted our little buddy, he could be very easily killed by a natural force beyond his comprehension. And the only way he could possibly prevent it through his own actions would be to understand it. And in this way, aren't we all woolly bears? There are threats out there that you don't understand. There are threats out there that I don't understand, of course. But an important difference between us and the woolly bear is that we have a chance of understanding those threats. We have resources, while the woolly bear doesn't. He doesn't have OSHA, he doesn't have FEMA, and he sure as shit doesn't have the NHS because, well, he's an American. And that's ultimately what this video is about. I will oftentimes see preppers purchasing M50s or JS lists or any other article of chemical protection, and they do that with the goal of surviving typically a nuclear detonation. And so this video is about the misuse of PPE and the grave consequences it can have. It is incredibly important that when you buy a piece of equipment for, well, any sort of safety use, whether it be sanding, whether it be, you know, chopping trees, or whether it's nuclear survival, it is important to read the literature that the manufacturer provides to ensure that it actually provides the protection against the expected threat. And that's how you stop being a woolly bear, by learning. And before I start sounding like a broken record, I'm just gonna cut this video off here because it's starting to get really cold. I might be a Michigander and built for this type of weather, but I mean, I'd rather be warm in my house. I hope you guys found this video informative or even just fun to watch. I really just hope you enjoyed it because this is a video I've been meaning to make for a few weeks now and just didn't really feel like it until now. My next video is also going to be really interesting. Uh, it's one that I'm actually really excited to make, but there are some final preparations I need to make on my end uh, before I actually start recording that. So expect that probably within the next month. So if you like this type of content, be sure to stick around and subscribe to see more. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one, whenever that is.